This essay example, as well as thousands of others, is available in text format on our website for free and without registration. Simply Google Ivy Panda Free Essays. Introduction In a world that is swiftly changing its pace to be at par with the vast technologies available, it seems that all people are not receiving only the good side of these necessary changes. As our lives have become more convenient and more sophisticated using these technologies and innovations, unwanted repercussions have sprouted within the realms of our social relationships and culture that are transforming them to become as disposable as the toilet paper in our bathrooms. As Alvin Toffler, in his landmark book Future Shock, had described, America is becoming a throwaway society where rapidity and transience have become the norm. Are we doomed to head to a society where we replace friends and partners as easily as we replace what brand of detergent we are using? Do people now become more transient as they move more rapidly to live in different locations to find new friends and mates? Do our present scenarios influence us to have more relationships of shorter duration and less depth and make us feel more confused and disconnected? Body Alvin Toffler's Future Shock is indeed an eye-opening book that described an epic vision of how the roaring current of change, job mobility, the decline of the small town, the throwaway consumer society, had left Americans in a state of shattered stress and disorientation. Although some parts may become too exaggerated as people might as well wear paper as clothing in the future, some salient points have been raised and are slowly becoming real right before our eyes. With globalization and liberalization of goods and services worldwide, Alvin Toffler's prediction is becoming real as the new economy of impermanence is flourishing, where we see more throwaway items consumed designed to meet human needs. This throwaway attitude will not only reflect on the things we could buy, but it will also affect how we deal with the social fabric. This might explain the rising divorce rates and shallow relationships we now uphold with our family and friends. The latest statistics revealed that the United States ranked 7th with 45.8% of new marriages ending in divorce in 2002. Although in 2004, divorce cases seem to have declined, but this decline is also related to the decrease in the number of marriages that have been consummated. In a USA Today report, Jason showed that the United States divorce rate is 17.7 per 1,000 married women, down from 22.6 in 1980. However, the marriage rate is also on a steady decline, a 50% drop since 1970 from 76.5 per 1,000 unmarried women to 39.9. Sam Brownback of the New York Times even observed that. Over the past five decades in the United States, the marriage rate has gone down and the divorce rate has gone up. In 1960, the out-of-wedlock birth rate was 5%. Now it is 37%. While you can valiantly raise a good child in another setting and we ought to celebrate it when it happens, the best way to rear a child is between a mom and dad bonded together for life. Children brought up with a mom and dad bonded in marriage are, on average, far more likely to succeed in school, avoid crime, and live happier and healthier lives. The best way to reduce poverty, fight crime, and improve education is to rebuild the family. This scenario is much attuned to what Alvin Toffler described as the degradation of social relationships decline. Society is more likely to be caught in chaos. When people become disconnected from their social relationships, there is more chance for children to have lower moral values. Also, the impact of having more single-parent families at present is that it can affect the growth and development of children. McClanahan concluded that children who grow up with only one biological parent are less successful, on average, than children who grow up with both parents. These differences extend to a broad range of outcomes, and they persist into adulthood. In his study, McClanahan found that children of single parents are about twice as likely to drop out of high school, twice as likely to have a child before age 20, and less likely to have a steady job in their late teens or early 20s. These negative consequences seem to occur regardless of whether the cause of the parent's absence is that the mother was never married or that the parents divorced. 
Not only did Toffler get it right in the divorce cases, but the research also revealed that the upsurge of new technologies desensitized people. For example, research has shown that the amount of time Americans over age 12 played video and computer games rose from 59 hours in 2000 to 69 hours in 2003, an increase of 17%. Also, it is believed that the average person in 2003 spent nearly $30 on these games, compared with about $26 in 2000, an increase of 15%. The marketing research firm NPD Group reported that the video and computer gaming industry sold $11.9 billion in merchandise in 2005, which was up from $11.2 billion in 2003. Of this, computer games accounted for $1.2 billion in 2003 and $1.4 billion in 2005. T is interesting to note that along with the increased number of hours American youth are exposed to video games, violence in school also rose. There were almost 700,000 violent crimes in American schools and 2,001.87 million crimes reported in 2001 committed by youth ages 12 to 20. In 2000, 9% of murders in the United States were committed by youth under the age of 18. This age group accounted for 15% of violent crime arrests in 2001. There are four types of violent criminal acts, murder, felony assault, rape, and robbery. However, in the school setting, any type of physical aggression and assault is considered to be violence, as is vandalism, damage to school property or the property of others, carrying a weapon, and threatening others with violence. Summary Ultimately, we need to do something to curb the grim scenarios described by Toffler in Future Shock. We should reap the positive benefits of technologies and innovations, but we should also remember that all the social relationships we have are not merely things that we can dispose easily of. We need to go back to the basics and teach our children to value their friends, family, and relationships before they become desensitized to what these technologies have to offer. We can still avoid this throwaway society if we begin realizing its ill effects and doing things right by concentrating on being concerned about our society and culture before it's too late. If you want to find more works like this report on Is America Doomed to Become a Throwaway Society, head over to ivypanda.com. It has a collection of free samples with thousands of submissions covering virtually all academic subjects. No registration required to access it.